Hi, this was going to be the Grammys video, but it got corrupted and I didn't feel like recording everything again, so here we are. But I do promise you that this one is going to be a little bit more interesting. Today's video is about the yin yang style systems created by Belle Northrop and the continuation of her work by Harriet McJimsey. Other slightly modern stylists use their own interpretation of their work. The most recognized ones would be John Kitchener and David Keevy. Something really important to know for this kind of systems is that they are subjective. Not everything is 100% yang or 100% yin. Everyone has different views on the same method. For example, some of them work with percentages, since they don't believe that anyone is 100% a pure type. Some remove or add categories like the ingenuine type. Something notable, if you are familiar with the systems, is that on the less known versions, ingenuine and gamine are the ones at the end of the yin spectrum, and romantic and classics are the mixed types. When you're looking at these style systems, sometimes instead of getting completely guided by the names, it is important to take into account the description of each type depending on the exact style system that you want to work with. There are a few controversial terms that can be found in the system, but I believe that it's mostly a cultural thing. I do think that in order to not read those terms as offensive, we should get rid of the negative connotations that we associate with those words. When you're looking into these systems, try not to take the words at face value. It's important to look a little bit further than that to understand the core of each essence. I do understand how frustrating it can be to hear that you have masculine characteristics when you're a woman, especially with the masculinization of women of color. However, let's remove the idea that yang means manly and that yin is feminine. The point of this video is to make an introduction to those types in a way that we can highlight the types of femininity that each one of them carries. So, do subscribe if you want to see the detailed version of each type. And if you don't want to go through the process of figuring your own type, you can hire me as your personal stylist at kekerstyling.com. Let's start with dramatics. Dramatic types are the ones with the most yang features, sometimes being called masculine. They are not masculine. I'm going to talk about the bone structure and why sometimes it gets called masculine on the in-detailed video on dramatics. Dramatics look their best in angular, sharp and slick garments, which is why the recommendation for them is almost always to wear tailored clothes. Now, tailored clothes can have different meanings depending on the context. In this one specifically, it translates into androgynous lines and silhouettes. Usually, with that description, most of us would think about suits. But if you are a dramatic, you don't have to wear a suit 24-7. Here are a few examples on how you can wear your lines in in a way that would be considered traditionally feminine. The simplified version of a dramatic would be someone who is either tall or looks tall that has an angular frame but it but it can also be described as narrow. The best lines for them will usually be things that do honor that vertical line but you can still cut it if you don't want that. 
but I will talk about how and the different ways you can style a dramatic in the video. Naturals. This is the other yang type, but instead of being sharp, they are blunt. It seems like natural types are the ones that get the worst reputation of all the kiwi or yin yang types because their main feature is that they have a wide or big bone structure. Most people don't like being described as wide. I guess it has something to do with wide being another way of calling someone fat. But you can be white and skinny or narrow and fat, so those two things don't have anything to do with each other. Actually, if you have a white bone structure, you're gonna look skinnier at a higher weight, if that makes sense. So since your bones are bigger, they weight more and they tend, well, sometimes depending on the person, they do tend to stick out. So you're probably going to look like you weight less than you actually do. I'm not saying that being fat is necessarily a bad thing. I used to be really overweight, so as long as it doesn't affect your health, it doesn't really matter. The simplified version of a natural would be someone with a larger or blunt bone structure that has some width to their frame. The recommendation for them is usually to go for something with a more casual vibe, naturals being the most common type. They kind of become the casual next door of the types. You don't always have to wear loose and uncomfortable constructed items. I would say a mix of fitted and loose garments is ideal. Not everything has to be shapeless and oversized, especially if you are not tall. One of the things that I like the most about naturals is that their bone structure allows them to wear pretty much anything they want because they can handle more things without getting overpowered. So. If you're a natural, take advantage of that. Classics. These are... They are one of the mixed types in these systems. Gamins being the mixed ones and the classics being a blend. What does that mean? It means that the features of a classic won't be completely yin or completely yang. It's a blend of almost yin and almost yang. The simplified description of a classic would be someone with very symmetric features. Everything is balanced and nothing sticks out too much. They might have a little bit more softness, a bit more bluntness or a bit more sharpness, but not so much that it becomes the dominant characteristic. The controversial image of a classic is that they are boring, but hey, a boring look is a boring look. It has nothing to do with your body. It depends on the way that you're dressing. And what is boring for someone might not be for another person. The good thing about being a classic is that they can wear something that could be considered basic, but they're still going to look amazing. It's that effortless look. Um, it's even better when they add a few interesting items. They should not be extremely loud so that it doesn't compete with them. Gamins. I feel like the whole gamin type is controversial. Sometimes gamins are described as childlike, not actually condescending grown women and calling them children. But if you go to the original work, you would see that gamins were actual children. That was why it was considered the most yin type along with the ingenuines. The simplified description of a gamin would be someone that is small, a little bit boyish and very youthful. That would be the description of the actual children that gamins wear but if we take that into the grown women aspect it is just someone that is more on the petite side 
and they have a mix of features that makes makes them look very youthful romantics. When we remove the ingenuines and we acknowledge the means as grown women, romantics become the ones with the most yin in their features. Sometimes being referred as the most feminine type, but if we're talking about feminine expression, any type can be feminine or masculine. You're the one who chooses the vibe that you want to give with your outfit and the way you carry yourself. The simplified description of a romantic would be someone with a figure that is on the curvy side, lush features and they tend to have a smaller frame, but not necessarily. For the controversy, I've seen two polar opposites. Romantics being considered the representation of feminine glamour and everyone wanting to be a theatrical romantic, but also people that would never want to be considered a romantic because they feel like they are being called fat because the description is about everything being rounded, but it's not about roundness in that sense is about not having sharp angles on your bones in a way that shows when you're choosing your garments. And finally we have the ingenuines. They have been removed from a few systems because at first it was referred to a teenager that then will age into another one of the types being somewhat similar to the gamin, spelled without an e because the gamin in this sense was was referring to a little boy so someone that isn't yet a teenager basically the gamins being the equivalent of someone with a prepubescent body and in genuine being the feminine version of that, aka being the little girl. According to Mac Jimsey, ingenuines tend to age into either romantics or classics after their adolescence. So it does make sense that it got eliminated. The simplified description of an ingenuine would be someone that is petite and youthful, but they have a little bit more softness than the regular gamin. So this is where the soft gamin came from. Very, very important note is that I am not calling anyone that is a gamin a child. I'm talking about the gamin description of the book in which they were actual children. But I will be talking a little bit about the evolution from the gamin as a child to the gamin that most of us are familiar with as a grown woman. So in all of this process and working with a lot of people, what I learned is that a lot of the times the grass is greener on the other side. I've worked with women that have more yin wanting to have more yang and women with more yang wanting to have more yin. We all have different bodies, so I don't think it's the best thing to want to have someone else's body. It's better to learn how to work with ours and understanding our features and then we can learn how to dress better and feel better about ourselves. If you want me to help you figure that out, you can hire me as your personal stylist at kerkerstyling.com. Let's remember that this video was about the controversies of the types and not what I think about the types. I will talk about that in later videos, but in the meantime, you can let me know if you know your type or which one is your favorite, and I'll see you soon.